Well, pretty soon I'm going to start work on making a new screw for this 6 inch Vivo vice. Now I'm not starting work yet, I was just passing the workshop, the door was open. I'm not properly dressed for it really. So because I'm not starting work, I will not be unscrewing the ring on the end of here, because obviously I'm not starting work yet. Well, even though I'm not starting work on this yet, because I'm not properly dressed, what about if I unscrew this? Aha! Uh, now can I get this out? I should explain the reason that I want to make a new screw. It's not so much that it's a bit of a rough old thread, which indeed it is. It's more that the screw is too short, I think. Now it is quite a long nut, this, to be fair. But with the jaws clamped, what's that screw about 35mm short at the end of the nut? So it's a nice exercise for me to try and cut um, a, new, a new screw. This end jaw's going to have to come off to get the screw out. Eight millimeter. Oh, five sixteens, Alan. Key, cap heads. Eight mil is five sixteens, isn't it? Near enough. I've still got the um, T slot pegs in at the bottom, that's why it's not sitting flat. It's a left hand screw. There's muck on here, but it might be mine. There's the nut. It's quite beefy. And the thread looks quite reasonable in there. Better than the thread on this screw. So this is what I'm going to make the new screw from. It's a Volkswagen Passat half shaft. It's really nice material. I was doing some parallel turning tests, that's why that's nice and bright. Now this is 27 mil, and this is 27.65, so it's absolutely perfect for this, as long as it's not too tough. I don't think it's going to be too tough. So end of prep, I'll come back when I'm properly dressed and ready to make a start. Sometime later, ready to make a start. Now, I'm not going to start by making the new screw. I'm actually going to improve the mounting at this end here. So there's a lot of friction in it, but also there's a lot of play as well. Now, I don't know how much that really matters, but I want to improve it. I bought a bush. I'll show you a close up in a second, but just to say, I know at some point during this video, somebody's going to say, why are you wasting your time on that cheap vice? Why not just buy a Kurt? Well, I'd love to buy a Kurt. In this country, a flea bitten Kurt with drill holes all over it is going to cost you three or four hundred pounds. So it's just not feasible to pay that sort of money. And also, being a hobbyist, I, a lot of what I do is just to learn and for the fun of it. Okay, it doesn't have to be efficient. I'm not trying to make money out of this, it's not a business. So this is a totally plain boss. I bought a bush. 24 inside, 27 outside, steel backed, bronze. I think it was about £3.50. But also to sit on this side here, I bought this thrust bearing. So between the two, 20 quid, uh, that's about 30 US dollars. So job one. I need to bore this out to 27mm, that's a challenge, because I don't have a 27mm reamer or drill, for example, or an, an inch and a sixteenth, which is about the same. And then this back face here has got curves on each end, so I need to make this flat right across so that that bearing will sit on there properly. Now that will be fitted when I make the new screw. To begin with, what I'm going to do is fit that bush. So I need to find a clever setup where I can get in here and bore this out to 27. I think I've got a setup that will work. Now I've used the locating pegs under the vise, the tramming pegs, 
on this near side of the table and so therefore it should be perpendicular to the table and lined up. So my next concern is to make sure that, what have I got to do? That this centre is lined up with the centre of this hole. Now uh, one thing I have done as a precaution, you can see what would happen if this went too far. If this is uh, screwed out like this to give me the ball that I need, if this was too close to this, this is going to smack onto this and break this casting or something if I just go too far like that you see. So I've put a piece of wood as packing, I'll show you, hang on. That piece of wood, which I've spent some time getting the right piece, that will stop that table going too close to the machine, too close this way. To get this hole dead on line with the spindle, well I've got this 25mm end mill holder, I've got some Delrin which is just the right size, I'm going to make a peg. So one end will go in there, the other end will go in there and when it's all right it'll all be in line. With the ball gauge 24.7mm because I just measured it. What is the parting off speed for Del Rent? Anybody know? I do know that it's quite stringy. No naughty comments, thank you. Oh, that's pretty good actually. Look at that, eh? Mm. My boring head is imperial and every division there is a thou and if I remember correctly this is calibrated on the diameter not on the radius because I'm shooting for metric sizes with an imperial boring head so 24.7 millimeters I think is 0.972 27 is what I need 1.063 added up 91 thou so if I can dial off 90 thou on that boring head, I should be about right, but I'll check it as I go along. Right, here goes. This will be 10 thou off the diameter, or the radius. We'll see. As I'm getting really close to this, I'm actually machining from this end and drawing this towards us so I can test fit the bush. And if you excuse my fingers, it's just going in. So I've got a couple of options now. I mean, I could tap that in. If it was machined right through, I could tap that in and I could lock tight it, or I could actually reduce my cut very slightly and that would allow me to uh, make it a slightly tighter fit. So before I press this bush in, I'm going to machine this face flat for this bearing. So this bearing is 42 outer, 25 inner. And when I make my new screw, I'm going to make a step on the screw to take that 25 there. This bearing number happens to be an 81105TN. I just chose it for size, that was all. And then when I've pressed this in, I may try and get this hole at the top in the centre. Not that it matters too much, to be honest. Oh, I should say, by the way, uh, before I bored that hole, I made sure that the hole in the nut, the threaded hole in the nut, did actually line up with the hole. So when this nut was manufactured, they did seem to get that lined up OK. Because if it had been out, I would have used this opportunity to correct it. But it seems fine. This bearing is going to go there. 
Now it won't lay flat at the moment because there's a curve on either end of this boss here. So I'm going to machine these corners out so that I can get this flat. But also I need to take a bit off there. Now with this cutter, which is the longest I've got of that diameter for the Clarkson, I can't get right to the bottom. But what I'm going to do though is touch off on this face, move across, cut these radiuses out, radi I, is it? Down to about there as far as I can go, it'll be enough. And then I'll come back with a longer, bigger cutter, just kiss this face and machine a bit off here. We were always told that fag paper, cigarette paper, is about a thou. Although when you're touching off on the side of a cutter, it's really quite difficult to see what you're doing. There it goes, I think. Now I'll lock the table at that, in this direction anyway. Sorry, where are we? Can't do it. This direction. I've lined this vise up on the table at 90 degrees to the travel using the two tramming keys that I made under here and those were cut relative to this jaw sitting on there like that. The question is, is this face cut along the line of the table travel or is it like that or like that? I don't know. <laughs> Let's just see what happens as I go that way. Now, as we are now, we're conventional milling, not plan milling. Oh, it seems to be okay. Look, it's taking that bit of paper with it. But at this stage, it's not taking anything off this face here. So that's quite promising. So we'll get this into the corner and see what happens. We could probably go a bit faster, couldn't we? Let's try a plunge cut. Now here I'm climb milling, even though it's a plunge cut, so I've locked the table X axis so it can't snatch across. Just to be super careful. Looks all right. So now I'll go for the longer cutter. Now I may do the whole face, don't know yet. Um, we'll just see how it works out. This Clarkson tooling is great, you know, I think. So there's the cutter that came out. That was a 10 mil. Now this has got a mark on there. See that notch? That means that's a metric collet. This is 5 16 long, which I'm going to fit. And that's not got the mark on, so I know that's an imperial collet. Back the cutter off. Turn the big nut till it touches. Move it back a fraction. Turn the cutter till it stops. And then lock it. Just a little tap. That should be enough. So I've just scraped the paper off with the bigger cutter and so I'll move this down and just take some out of there which is just catching the bottom of the bearing so I only need to do from about there to about there probably. Well, I got there in the end. I skimmed the whole face. Don't worry about these lines. That's just a bit of spring back on the cutter. I've machined this part of the screw down to 24. To fit this bush, it was 24.3. I've got some soft lock. I don't want super tough lock. 
and we'll just tap it in. Now I know it's 15 from there to there. I've machined this to 28. Not easy. Can't clamp it too tightly in the lathe chuck. And as I was working on it, of course, it was sliding into the chuck. So I hope this doesn't bind up, which it looks like it's going to. I need something a bit more aggressive to tap it with. Nothing's ever easy, is it? I didn't think this was going to be as tough as this. Well, I got there with a slight tooling change. I did query the colour of this because it's supposed to be a bronze bush in a steel back. But when I read the write-up, it says the bronze is in some kind of polymer for low friction. So I have to assume that they know what they're talking about. I don't like these very much, to be honest. I prefer the cigarette paper method. as a tapered which could be quite convenient for this I mean that hand reamers have a tapered lead that's what I mean Pretty smooth, slightly tight if anything, but it'll free up. Well, that's it for this one. Next job will be machining the new screw. I hope that goes okay. What a flick of my signal. Oh, <laughs> a bit of stock for another job coming sometime. Thanks for watching.